Hello, firsties. It's Mr. Galden here. I hope you're all working hard on the materials that Mrs. Stallions and I prepared and sent home with you and growing your brains. I also hope that you're behaving well for your parents. Uh, while you're home, it's important to remember that you still need to work hard to grow your brain. So as a reminder, I thought it would be a good idea to read you this story, Your Fantastic Elastic Brain. Your fantastic elastic brain. Stretch it, shape it. By Joan Deek, PhD, illustrated by Sarah Ackerley. Here our owl says an average person's short-term memory can hold seven digits at a time. Two, eight, three, one, nine, zero, eight. I think I can remember this number, says the mouse. The bottom here, our owl says the human brain weighs about three pounds. And the mouse says, erg, it feels like a lot more. What does your brain really do? Does it fill the space between your ears? Well, yes, but your brain can do so much more. Our owl says, hello in there. And our mouse says, all I see is pink stuff. Your brain helps you think and remember. And name what you see and what you hear. It lets you move your body and feel both touch and emotions. Your brain does all the things that make you, you. Here, it shows that this girl likes red foods. Her favorite word is elbow. She is a ping pong champion. She knows global landmarks. She's good at science and enjoys reading pirate books. Our owl says she's so unique. And our mouse says, my favorite word is foot. So what is your brain? Is it a muscle? No, the brain is an organ in your body. It's made up of cells and tissue. The brain controls everything you do, everything you think, everything you feel, even everything you dream. And our owl says, hey, I had that same dream. And up in his dream says, greetings, earthlings. Welcome to planet organ. And these are other organs in the body. The brain has many parts that do all kinds of different jobs. We have the cerebrum here in blue, the prefrontal cortex in orange, the hippocampus is this green line there. Cerebrum is red and the amygdala is that small yellow dot. And our owl says, whoa. And the mouse says, that pink stuff is busy. Over here, cerebrum is the largest part of your brain. It helps you think and speak. This boy says, I think, therefore I am. And this boy says, that's deep. Cerebellum is a small part at the back of the brain that helps your muscles to coordinate your movement and your balance so that you can walk, ride a bike, or play tag. Our owl says, I can walk and chew gum. The prefrontal cortex, PFC for short, is the part of your brain behind your forehead. It lets you make plans and decisions. Our girl here is making decisions in the lunchroom and the lunch lady says, mystery meat or secret soup? And she is thinking, hmm, decisions. The hippocampus is at the center of your brain. It works like a file cabinet to help you store and find memories. Our mouse here says, found it, and his file says, cheese. The amygdala is a tightly packed group of cells deep within the center of the brain that controls your emotions. Here we have excited, angry, embarrassed, frightened, sad, and happy. Neurons are everywhere in your brain. They are tiny brain cells that make electrical signals 
to send messages to other cells in your brain, in your body, telling them what to do. Here, our owl says, amygdala means almond. And the mouse says, I can see how it got that name. Do you see how small the amygdala is? It's probably about the size of an almond. When you were born, you were very little. Your brain was small and not so strong. As you get older, your body grows and gets stronger. As part of your body, your brain grows and learns to do new things. And you can make your brain do even more. Your brain grows very fast during the first 10 years of your life. This is the magic decade when you can help your brain grow faster and more powerful. Just like lifting weights helps your muscles get stronger, learning new things strengthens your brain. You can give your brain a good workout by trying to learn many different things. Like elastic bands that stretch when you pull them, even things that are hard at first or that you don't like to do or that you don't do very well get easier when you keep trying. Our owl says, nice kick. Think about the first time you played soccer. You probably couldn't kick the ball far or make many goals. But as you kept going to practices, you learned more about the rules of the game and followed your coach's directions. The muscles in your legs and feet got stronger. Your movements were more coordinated and you could run farther and faster. Learning more and practicing what you learned let you play better and have more fun. Practice really does make perfect, or at least much better. Even when you make a mistake while learning something new, you are still training your brain. We remember that mistake and try something else until you get it right. Making mistakes is one of the best ways your brain learns and grows. If you aren't willing to risk being wrong, you won't take the chances that stretch your elastic brain. Here you can see our girl looking at a magic trick that's gonna make a rabbit pop out of a hat. First she says, abracadabra, and our owl says, hmm, nothing yet. Here she tries, shazam, so she's trying something new, nothing, and the mouse says, keep trying, and then she tries, hocus pocus, and we can see that her rabbit finally came out of the hat when she tried something new and kept trying and was willing to make mistakes. You can stretch the part of your brain that controls your feelings, too. If you're frightened about taking a risk, like learning to swim, finding the courage to put your face in the water stretches your amygdala. It will remind you that you can overcome your fear. So you'll be braver the next time something scares you, like diving into the water. Learning something new causes the brain to grow. More connections among the neurons. With more connections, the neurons can send and receive more messages. These connections help to stretch a part of your brain and make it more elastic so it can hold more information and ideas. How does the brain stretch and grow? A word that begins with neuro has something to do with the brain. A sculptor molds, shapes, or carves things out of clay or wood or stone. So you shape your brain when you make it bigger by adding new things you know and can do. You are a neuro sculptor. And our owl down here says, how did you do that? And the mouse says, neurons, my feathered friend. When you learn something new, you're building on what you have already learned. In the same way that the muscles in your body work together when you want to lift a heavy object or kick a ball, the different parts of your brain work together when you're learning something new. The amygdala makes you want to learn to play the piano. The, cere the cerebrum helps you decide to practice. The cerebellum calls up the memory of watching and listening when your piano teacher showed you how to play a new piece of music. Then your cerebellum sends messages through neurons to the muscles in your wrists, hands, and fingers so that you can hit the right notes. The next time you play that piece of music, the parts of your brain and body will know how to work together and you will play the song more easily. 
The brain that makes you, you, really is an amazing organ. It controls what you think, do, feel, and remember. Your brain is growing very fast during the first 10 years of life, and now we know that you can help it grow. When you try hard to learn something new, connections grow from neurons and, atta and attach to neurons, and attach to other neurons. Then your brain can send messages faster, making part of your brain bigger and stronger. Making mistakes really helps you learn because your brain keeps trying new things and stretching until you figure out the answer to your problem. You are shaping a more elastic brain when you learn new things that build on what you already know. The more you learn and think about different kinds of things, the more you can learn, know, and enjoy. The harder you try without giving up, the more you will learn. You really can train your brain to be fit and strong and to keep stretching and growing throughout your whole life. All right, boys and girls, I hope that you enjoyed today's story and you can see why it's so important to keep growing our brains, especially when we're young. Uh, if you have any questions, or if work is confusing or difficult, it's important to keep trying, and your parents can always reach out to me on Remind to help you with any of your schoolwork. I hope you're all enjoying growing your brains at home, and I'm looking forward to seeing you back in school when we're back in session. I'll be back with another story later, and please show me what you're learning at home in the comments below. All right, I'll talk to you soon.